Ladies and gentlemen, I am finally on my way to the Wildlands Traverse. Oh, there's the world's greatest car. Gear goes in the back. Let's get moving. We've got a two hour drive. I'm gonna go into all the planning, the route, the gear list and logistics that it takes to plan a pack raft and foot traverse of the Queen Elizabeth Wildlands. Driving up the 400, about 30 minutes left to go. This is what I want to do. I want to tell the backstory of where this trip came from, okay? <clears throat> so you guys know uh, Queen Elizabeth II Wildlands Provincial Park. It's primarily crown land. And there's a hiking path that goes across from the east side to the west side. Um, and I had planned on doing that about a month or two ago in the spring. However, when you look at a map, you realize that between like mid-April to mid-May, um, the Black River Road is actually closed. And it's closed because that river ends up flooding and there's flooding all along there. And that river ends up becoming quite an intense whitewater run. So I had posted this on the Ontario Backcountry uh, Forums, the Ontario Backcountry Camping Forums uh, on Facebook, asking some questions. I talked to a lovely girl named Michelle, and she's the one that gave me all the beta on the river. So then I decided, well, what happens if I link up that hiking trail to the Black River, but then all along that hiking trail, I do a little bit of pack rafting through the lakes. So the entire loop, and we'll go through the map together, goes from the east side of the park all the way across the top and then down the Black River to Chisholm Road. And that's what you're going to look at right now. I'll begin my journey on the east side of the park, starting at the zero kilometer mark. I will then hike with all my gear in a backpack along the Devil's Lakes section up until I meet Petticoat Junction. At Petticoat Junction, I'll pack raft across Cooney Lake, portage and backpack the Peters section up until I get to the Wolf Lake section. Then I'll get back in my pack raft across Wolf Lake and end at the portage on the west side. I'll then pack up my gear and make my way all the way to campsite number one at the 15 kilometer mark. On day number two, I'll be hiking only along the entire Ganaraska Trail Wilderness section until I meet at the Otter Junction point. At that point, I'll take the southern terminus and down the Montgomery Creek Loop Trail and camp at campsite number two at the 31 kilometer mark. On the morning of day number three, I'll inflate my pack raft at Victoria Falls and make my way all the way down the Black River, likely portaging any of the rapids that are there, making my way all the way to the Chisholm Trail endpoint at 46 kilometers. And now that you've seen the route and you understand the uh, strategy of getting across the park, I'm going to show you my gear list. So here it is. Now you're going to notice that in general, it's a pretty light list. I think around eight or nine pounds is the base weight, but Whenever I bring my pack rafting gear, it adds about like 10 to 15 pounds. So something to keep in mind that you'll see is because we're a little bit later in the year and the river actually isn't flooded, but I'm still going to paddle it, I don't need all my white water gear. It's also a lot warmer because it's uh, mid-June right now. And so I don't need my dry suit. I don't have a helmet with me. Of course, I have a PFD, my paddle, and the uh, the narwhal, the alpaca narwhal pack raft. But what I don't need is the white water skirt, the thigh straps, and all that stuff. So it does reduce the weight slightly by re removing those items that are needed. The other thing I want to talk about is the weather. And I'll put it right here so you can see it. The next week is going to be raining uh, torrentially pretty much. It hasn't started raining yet, but I checked the weather forecast for where I'm going and it's already raining there and it's pretty much not going to stop raining. So on the gear list, the one thing that you don't see, I grabbed it this morning, is I have a hammock gear Cuban fiber tarp. And it is, I think it's 12 by 10, 12 feet by 10 feet, so it's huge. And I strap that to the top of my pack. That way, every time I get to a campsite or I rest, I can whip the tarp off really quickly and kind of get some uh, a safe haven from the rain. So that's added on top of the gear list that you currently were just looking at. Okay, and then logistics, because it is a linear trail. So I reached out to a couple of outfitters um, over the last week or so. I even called a taxi company and none of them would bring me from one side of the trail to the other. I think it's about 100 kilometers to go from where I want to leave my car to the front. 
So what I did is I'm actually meeting my mom and my nephew, which is totally weird because I'm a grown man, but my mom still likes to do this type of stuff for me. So she is going to meet me at the end point of the trip. I'm going to leave my car there and then she's going to shuttle me to the start of the trip and that's when I'll begin uh, hiking and pack rafting. We have found her. So as an update, for those, those of you wondering, uh, we had a little navigational issue. Um, my mom was just a little bit further away than I had anticipated, so I went and grabbed her. She's now following me, and we're gonna go to the starting point. No, we're gonna go to the end point, drop the car off. How much of that is, it's like all the like, all the paddles, how much? I know, and food? <sighs> I, I, I can't even imagine. How long are you going for? Coming back Sunday, right? Me? Yeah, I'll be back Sunday. Okay. That's the last time we repack that thing. That, that. This, I gotta adjust that. Let's go. Keep that in the video so that everybody knows how much of a jerk you are. <laughs> so we're on our way to the adoption agency. <laughs> because everybody hates the man in the back seat. Oh no! Come on, no. Yeah. No. The internet now knows. <laughs> yeah. You're... The Zingmeister. <laughs> what, do you, what you got? What you got? Dude. <laughs> oh. Ten oh. viewers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god. And then your mom who comments on every video. <laughs> <laughs> We've arrived. It's time to say goodbye to the family. See you in four days. Thank you. Okay. This is my phone? Yeah. Okay, see you later. Bye. And that's the end of planning route gear and logistics. Time to start the trail. Today's plan is to make it from Devil Lake Access Point to Loon Lake or maybe a little bit further. We've got about 15 kilometers to travel. I've got the pack raft with me. We're going to do a combination of hiking and pack rafting. But for now, let's head up here. The time check is 11.15, so there was definitely some work involved in the logistics of getting here because I left my house at about seven and uh yeah I'm anticipating four or five hours maybe six I'm hoping that the rain holds off because right now it's gorgeous and honestly the bugs at this exact moment don't seem that bad well let's wait and see Sketchy. Ooh. Not sure if you can see that, but there's a a light drizzle right now um, in the forest or on the trails you don't really feel it too much but you can see it dripping out on the lake I'm hoping that it doesn't get much worse than that but um, the storm well you saw if you watch the first part of this trip you would have seen the weather forecast and there's a significant storm coming in so it could be really bad ooh Oh, the bugs are getting me. Or it could, uh, could be good. Let's see what happens. I know this is the story of my life, but it's 11.55. I think I lost the trail back here somewhere and just followed a game trail. So I'm just backtracking a tad to see what's gone wrong. It's actually a fire pit here. So maybe this is like a, a uncertified campsite that had a trail to it. And I just branched off the wrong one. 
I apologize, I did not see that. And I walked like a kilometer past it. I was wondering why it was so filled up with stuff. And obviously this is the way. I don't know how I missed that guys. Tidbit here. Woo. Oh. Sorry, I didn't mean no. to. No, scary. <laughs> I apologize. Looking out of your way. No, it's all good. Sure, I don't I'm... think I'm gonna be running up that anyway. It's all I'm good. filming myself. Too. No, the thumping scared me. <laughs> so go ahead. Thanks. You doing the whole thing? No, I was planning on going a lot further, but um, it just got wicked buggy out there, and I just I turned back a lot. So, just bumped into a trail runner. If you don't know what that is, it's someone who runs the trails as opposed to someone like me that kind of walks them, I guess, over days. But uh, I'm always amazed at some of these people. Like, you know, I'll do this trail in three days or something. It'll be a pretty painful experience for me. And then I see someone like that, you know, run it in eight or nine hours or something. It's wild. My knees would never handle it. I'm also an old man. So, you can hear me huffing and puffing. Just ripping that guy to shreds, man, two on one. Look at the views. I'm sure in high water, this would certainly be a challenge. Man, I am sweating. It's a little bit humid. I don't want it to rain, but if it does rain, it would certainly cool me off. Okay, I wanted to touch base some. Oh, it looks like we get to Sheldon Lake. Very cool. You are here. So we're gonna hike around. The trail is immaculate. I just want everyone to know that. And it was really funny because I was thinking um, when I got lost there, I was like, wow, this is going to be like a really tough trail to follow. But then I found the trail and ended up that it's actually blazed very well. And I was thinking, you know what, after I'm done this, I should probably donate a little bit of money to the Ganaraska Hiking Association or whatever it is, the ones who maintain this trail. And then I bump into three trail, uh, trail uh, maintenance um, volunteers or, or whatever from Ontario Parks. And I gave them a big kudos and now I kind of regret not having them in the video. So if by some miracle, the three of you was a, a young lady, a young man, and then probably a gentleman my age or so, if you three are watching this, thank you very much, man. You're doing a fantastic job. I can't believe how good it is. Just look at it. It's so beautiful. Look at that. And the signs, the signs, it's great. It's fantastic. Anyway, thought I'd, thought I'd take the time to tell you guys that. Bill Pryor, 1936 to 2002. So I guess he was an advocate for the area and certainly was part of the outing club of East York. Well, may he rest in peace. And uh, it's actually a quite a nice monument along the trail. You know, everyone that walks by will see it. So Bill, hope you're doing well, man. My hat's a little bit sweaty, but what I do is I, I spray it with my uh, bug sauce. And I've got this here because I'm afraid of uh, like a tick or something falling down the back of my neck. Okay, we're taking a two minute break here at 1.15. We've been hiking for two hours. We haven't made super good time, probably gone like five or six kilometers. Petticoat Junction is about a kilometer and a half from here. At that point, we're gonna make a decision. We're either going to Put the pack raft in, I think it's called Cooney Lake, and start pack rafting, or we're gonna hop to the next lake. The problem is, is that from Cooney all the way to the end of Wolf is a very long way. 
and pack rafting on flat water is not the best thing you can do. It's a little bit inefficient. So yeah, we're gonna have to decide in about half an hour and you're gonna do it with me. Okay, a little update. Just made it to Petticoat Junction. Found my first tick on my leg. Anyway, we're gonna go in the water. We're gonna get off the trail. This looks like a great way to put in. And we're gonna make our way across here. It is raining just a little bit, but you know what? It'll cool me off and get me out of the woods. There's a big up and down here, and I wouldn't mind just paddling here. Any of you guys that have not seen my pack raft set up, um, shame on you. So I've got a Werner paddle. It's essentially a four-piece whitewater paddle. I know it's flat water, but I don't actually have flat water stuff. I only have white water stuff. So that's what's gonna happen. The good thing is is that everybody in the world asks me, how does your pack raft work on flat water? And I'm gonna tell you, you can't get any more flat than this lake, and we're gonna be able to time it, so I'll let you know. So paddle done. Now the way the pack raft inflates, if you haven't watched my video on the pack raft, you should. But it's essentially like a seven or eight pound, you know, white water dinghy. That inflates using this bag. And you put the bag on the valve, you fill the bag with air, and you inflate it, like so. I do that about uh, 15 to 20 times. I'm not gonna bore you with it, but the next time I see it, it'll be inflated. So I've got a cool hack for you guys. Uh, who have pack rafts and attach backpacks to the front of them like I'm gonna do right now And that is that usually people have this big strapping system and they put a bunch of things around there I do not do that. No way Jose. I used to I used to like tie it all up and everything but now Now let me show you the ways I Just get I Just get four mini carabiners Two of these are night eyes and two of them are from uh, Mountain Laurel Designs. They're way like, you know, a couple grams each. And I put them on the straps and attach them to the four areas. So let me do it and then I'll show you. Put a carabiner there, carabiner there, carabiner there, and a carabiner there. And that keeps it pretty rock solid to the top of the, uh, pretty rock solid to the top of the pack raft. Now. This is the HMG Windrider 3400, I think. I don't love it for whitewater stuff. It's not 100% waterproof. It's not like the ULA Epic. The ULA Epic is the tried and true pack rafting pack. Anybody who says otherwise, you're, you're wrong. I won't have it. I won't have it. Let's get in the water. Okay, so we're all set up. Ugh. Now, for the most part, it's pretty pretty low wind and we've got about three quarters of a kilometer to the other side of the lake the time is 2 19 um, let's see what it takes let's see what it takes to get there so you can see actually I mean I don't know if you can tell but on flat water obviously it, it's very nimble this uh, the pack raft so you know it if you paddle to the right it twists to the right you've really got to go paddle on each side equally but you get some pretty good speed it doesn't glide anywhere near as well as a canoe but um, you know it's certainly possible and we're gonna get across this pretty quickly it's a little bit raining out so I don't know if you can see where we came from it's way down there the GoPro has a bad lens for this it tends to like really um, what's the word I think a really wide lens a wide angle and I have this set at linear so there's the dock right here behind me it's probably it's a bit more than half a kilometer probably, three quarters of a kilometer looks like on the map. And we left at uh, 2.19 and, and we got here in 10 minutes. So 
you know, maybe if you hustle, you can paddle this thing three kilometers an hour, maybe four if you're really hustling. No wind, no head, no with no wind though. So I would at this point officially classify it as raining out. This is not a drizzle. This is the real deal. So let's get coverage in here, put the pack raft away, and chances are we're going to be hiking for a good portion of this now. Just the, uh, if it comes down really hard when I'm in the water, just get soaked. At least in here, get a little bit of uh, respite. I love how depending on how I feel and how bad the bugs are, is how I pack my bag. We gotta get moving or we're gonna die. We're actually gonna die where we are. <laughs> it's an old shack. Looks like this is the portage. I guess there's just like some hunting shack here or something. It's looking a little rough. Like really rough. This is where the suffering officially begins. It is raining. These are made by Luke's Ultralight. They're amazing. The problem is the dude that makes them, Luke, I'm not sure what happened to him, but he basically just started taking orders and never delivering them. I got lucky and got a set. But there's hundreds of people that didn't get lucky, so, you know. Beware, big zippers. That's it, bud. I feel cool in these. I feel cool. I don't really feel cool. Okay, so we have confirmed that this is the part of the trip where the suffering begins. It's really hot, uh, it's pissing rain, and the trail is very bad right now. I guess the trail workers, I mean, God bless them, they only get up to a certain point, and then you kind of get towards the more rugged section. I mean, it's overgrown, man. It's really overgrown. It's blazed well, they're good blazes, but it's overgrown. So, um, even my glasses are fogging up. That's how hot it is. Just gonna plug away. Just gonna plug, oh. Thought I lost my life jacket, but I forgot. I put the PFD inside. All right, gonna use my pole so I don't slip. See you around. Doing some work, doing a little bit of work here, guys. So, the trail is bad. Actually, this is the trail right here. That's actually the trail. That's the trail. There's on that tree, see the white marker? So it goes, goes in there somewhere. I gotta get back on the water. That's the key. It's pissing rain. I'd rather get wet than, than make such terrible time. Right now, I'm not gonna be able to make it to my campsite. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have a GPS or anything. Like, th this is just tough to get through. So, Gonna get around this section and then as soon as we get to, I guess like, I don't know if it's Wolf Lake or Victoria Lake, whatever it is up there, I'm putting the pack raft back in and I'll just paddle the rest of the way. We're gonna have to make an executive decision soon, you know. So, it's no one's fault, but I guess the pandemic, clearly no one has been through here. Like this is the trail. So it's taken me a long, long time. Let's, let's just show you here. Like, I mean, so, you know, this is not, this is not conducive to the speed or distance that I want to make. They have to get, they're using these things now. So I think we need to get back on the water. Unless, you know, some miracle happens and it opens up a lot. 
but it is not looking like it is. And I mean, I could just suffer it out, but to be honest, I'm more nervous about getting lost because it's so easy to get turned around out here. And you guys know me, I do have a GPS with me today, but I usually don't use it. Actually, I've never used it. It's the first time I brought it. Okay. Well, if anything, uh, you guys know the type one, type two, type three. Right now, I'm, th I'm still thinking this is type two. I don't think this is type three. It's type two fun, so I know not, it's not fun right now, but it will be, it will be later on. It will be when I reflect on this trip. Just not, not right now. This is not good. We're going in. We got no choice. If this is what it's gonna be like tomorrow, then we're gonna to have to get an early start. And the pouring rain doesn't uh, help either. So what I wanna do is get the campsite at a decent time today so I can get all set up for tomorrow. Glasses are fogging up, but there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what lake that is because I gotta check my map, but it's big enough to throw a pack raft in, so it's good enough for me. ourselves back in the pack raft. At least it's warm, you know? If it's cold, that'd be another thing. So I didn't pull the map out, but I think we've got about four or five kilometers to get to the end of Wolf Lake. The end of Wolf Lake is where um, the, wilder, the, the wildlands traverse uh, starts again. And then we gotta go to Loon Lake. I don't know how many kilometers it is, maybe five or six. Right now, it is 4.30. So we've got about, gosh, probably close to five hours, maybe not five hours, four, a solid four hours of sunlight, probably five hours before the sun goes down, you know? Um, so we'll just boogie along. Boogity, boogity. So we've got a 30 meter lift over right here. My best guess is it's right there. Um, looking a little bit muddy and boggy, but I don't really see anywhere else where it could be. And it almost looks like you could paddle right through it. So I think we're going to give it a go there. Let's go! Well, for those of you wondering about pack rafting on flat water, it's not the speed that the issue is, it's the effort to keep the speed. Um, like I said before, it doesn't glide. It doesn't glide, there's no, no gliding, so you're just constantly paddling and your arms get sore. So, you know, I've been paddling for over an hour. It's actually five o'clock right now. Um, I got my head net on. For some reason, out in the middle of the lake, a giant gang of like horse flies or something um, attacked me. I actually thought, at first I thought it was bees. I thought they were wasps, because I couldn't really see what they were. And I thought, I don't know, maybe there was like a hornet's nest close by or something like that, or a wasp nest, and they were coming to kill me. But uh, ended up just being these gross flies. So I tried to swat them away, I couldn't, so I had to put this on. I might be able to take it off soon. Anyway, we're on Wolf Lake now. And uh, once we hit the portage, we'll be two kilometers away from our campsite. can't find the portage. There's this here, which looks like a portage, but everything seems so well marked that I would think there would be something here. It doesn't look like there is. Ugh. But you know what? I'm gonna go with it. I gotta get some shelter. It's uh, just a little bit, tad little raining, tad little raining. Okay. I think this is it. I gotta put this stuff away. I gotta pack up and I gotta get moving. It's, uh, it's getting cold. 
It is 5.30 now, and we still got a couple hours before we get to the campsite for sure. So this is just a, like a mental challenge to stay positive. I mean, this rain, I know the forecast is not gonna let up. I win anyway, so I deserve it. But, uh, you know, I was kind of hoping for a miracle, really. <laughs> uh, once I get the tarp set up, uh, we'll dry off and it'll be good. Okay, so just to check in, because you guys don't know this, but I've been gone for a while. It's 6.30 now. I got lost for about an hour, finally found the trail. I don't know what, I got have no clue where I was going or what I was doing, but I ended up way the hell out of the way. Oh, and so now we're a little bit in desperation mode just to get to the campsite in hopes we can dry off. And, uh, you know, tomorrow I got to really, really pay attention to the trail. But I don't want to get too lost and take too much time. Okay. I don't think you're even going to be there until I get to the campsite. I'm, I'm just in the hunt mode right now. Whoa. Hey! There's something fucking... There's something big over here. I don't think anybody truly understands what it takes to get through here. Jesus. There's something huge just jumped in the water. Hey! Coming through! Okay, well, we made it to the campsite. Uh, actually looks really nice. Water's a little bit far away, but I'll get that right away. We were gonna have a fire, had a great fire pit. Two picnic tables. Looks like you can set up your tent over here. I'm probably gonna put up a tarp, just quickly, so that I can at least get changed. I gotta check for ticks. There's a high tick population here. So I need to get a little bit buck naked. It's uh, oh man, what a day. What a day, I'll give you an update as soon as I get set up. Okay, I got a tick. Shit, I might have two. All right, well, here's how to remove a tick with Steve Evans. This is the worst. That's it. Now I gotta check the rest of my body to see how bad I am. I might have like 20 in me. Okay, guys. Still raining out, in case you're wondering. It's probably a little dark, because uh, the GoPro doesn't have good lighting for, for nighttime. Let's go over a couple things before we end the evening. So, there's no fire tonight. As a matter of fact, I've already hung my food. I've got, um, what is that? Cra uh, mac and cheese for dinner. I'm gonna cook it and basically go to bed in the next, I don't know, probably half hour. So today, um, we probably did around 20 kilometers. Uh, it, like, if you look at a map, it's only about 16. But I mean, the friggin' t amount of times I got lost, I'm not sure. So, um, looks like I went through like a bad section and maybe as we get closer to the west side, it gets a little bit better. But I am concerned about tomorrow, um, just in case I don't so my battery actually just died. Um, catching up, so I am concerned about tomorrow just in case I don't make good time. And then, you know, I gotta somehow bail out or something, because it's a 15 kilometer hike tomorrow to get to Victoria Falls, 15 or 16. And I think it gets much more rugged over here. So, um, you know, it might be a full day. The only other thing I could do is I could do like maybe 10 or 11 tomorrow and then hike three or four the next day and then kayak out on the Sunday because the reality is, is the Black River uh, that I'm gonna be kayaking is only like a 10 or 13 kilometers. It's probably gonna take me like two or three hours. So I got lots of time. Anyway, we'll work all that out tomorrow. Uh, tick, ticks. Okay, this park is riddled with ticks. I already showed you how I removed one. I had removed two more off my leg and then I had to do a full inspection. And I don't know if you guys know what I mean by full inspection, but you gotta get a little mirror and you gotta check all the nooks and crannies. You know what I mean? The uh, the areas that we don't speak of. Anyway, it's all safe. Took some pictures of my back. Doesn't look to be any. Um, so it looks like I just picked up three. That's pretty good. Um, 
I set up my tent. I've got the tarp. Uh, I'm never leaving this tent again. If I have to pee, I'm just gonna pee basically right in front of my tent here. There's so many bugs. And I'm not gonna do much else other than just eat and uh, you know, kind of hit the hay because it's about nine o'clock. Where's my... Yeah, it's 9 p.m. So I'll tell you what, guys, I'm gonna let you go. I'll see you in the morning. And uh, hopefully let's do this together. Let's, let's uh, make this a su successful trip. Ticks are everywhere around here, man. Okay. I got a question for you guys. Can you not kill a tick? Dead serious. I squashed him like 50 times and he's fine. But I need to understand. Can you not kill ticks? Like, can you not squash them? What the hell? Oh my god, still pouring and now there's some like hurricane wind starting. I've never seen anything like this before. I actually think that like there might be like a tornado warning in the area or something. Okay, so as an update. As an update, it's around 2 a.m. And storm is violent it's been going pretty much non-stop I just pulled out my Garmin and I asked for a weather report I just want to make sure that uh, you know it's not something more severe than just some big wind and rain because uh, if it is then I'm gonna go to lower ground I don't know if you remember but I'm in a pretty exposed area because I didn't really anticipate this type of weather um, so I'm just waiting to get that report back and we'll go from there. Okay, so looks like heavy rain at 3 a.m. Heavy rain at 5 a.m. Heavy rain at 7 a.m. But it starts to drop to around 40%. I don't know if you can see that. 20% at 11. 30% at 1, then it goes back up to 70. So it looks like we might let up a bit. Sunday has a much lower chance of rain. So it sounds like that right now we're going through the brunt of it. Literally. Literally, it should only get better from now on. Been a lot of tent talk lately. Okay, good morning. It's 8.31. I actually fell asleep around 3-ish, maybe. Um, the rain has stopped. Now, I did get a weather forecast last night. It's going to continue again, but I'm just going to get up and get hiking while it stopped to make it somewhat easier. Everything is soaked. Everything is soaked. <clears throat> it's just part of life. Let me show you the mosquitoes. They're waiting for their breakfast, and the breakfast is me. Ooh, little update. Everything I have is very, very wet. It's actually soaked right through. But there's a technique to that, assuming that it doesn't rain. So if it continues raining, there's nothing I can do. Everything I have is soaked. I'm just going to be soaked. If it doesn't rain, what I do is I wear all my wet clothes anyway. And then the heat that I generate from my body pushes that moisture out and dries it. Oftentimes, if I wear my rain jacket over top, because it's so breathable, it'll do the same thing. So as long as it holds off for a few hours, I should be able to dry my clothes off while wearing them. Second thing I want to tell you is <clears throat> I never mentioned it yesterday uh, because I was embarrassed. But I had a catastrophic rear-end failure of my rain gear. So this is these are my rain pants. This is the waist right here. And this, this is the bum, guys. Look at that. That's a, that's a significant, like, 8-inch diameter hole in my butt. So these are going to have to be uh, either replaced or repaired. And that type of stuff makes me sad, because I don't know if you remember, at the beginning of the, for the first video, I told you that these are, like, basically, you can't get them anymore. So, see, maybe I can find a seamstress to fix those. 
I'm really gonna pack up now and get the hell out of here. Uh, there, it's a little bit nicer outside and I wanna get on the move. Note to self, when it rains, the beaver dams will be very high and soggy. The one right after Loon Lake, honestly man, that took, uh, took a few years off my life. <sighs> These boggy type areas are really good to see in moose early in the morning or in the evening. They come and they feed off the uh, food and plants growing off the bottom. Doesn't seem like any today though. These caterpillars are like they're all over me. One was on my ear. I almost had to cut my side of my head off. I, mean, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm not a huge fan of caterpillars crawling on my face. couple little ducks or loons. I always love areas like this. They're so like diverse. There's just so much life in this thing. You know, not that I would want to, but if you could swim underneath here and just see all the living organisms, it's like its own little ecosystem. Beavers, frogs, snakes, ticks, mosquitoes, flies, <laughs> everything. Everything you can imagine. Hey, it's sunny out. Time to cross another beaver dam. Which is my favorite thing to do. Oh, soaker. It's just areas of the trail. I just completely overgrown, I guess. Oh, just soaked. It's okay, it keeps you cool. Jeez, there's flies on my hand when I'm filming. My pants are wet. But it's not raining, I can't believe it. Based on the forecast, I thought I was gonna be in for it, and I still might be. Don't, uh, don't count your chickens. But you know, I just mean it doesn't look like a hurricane like it did before. So I'm pretty happy with that. So, uh, I don't think that's gonna happen. I'm gonna find another way around maybe. Maybe down here, maybe. Man, that deer fly messed up my shot.
that, if I'm not mistaken, looks like a caterpillar nest, which is where, it, where all these caterpillars are coming from. Not that specific nest, but you know, all over, all over the place. Uh, I think we're at Deep Gully, guys. I think it's just up here. Ooh. A little beaver dam action. No big deal. It's probably my 100th beaver dam. Okay, we've got to put this camera away. I'm going to slip. <laughs> Jeez, these bugs. So there's actually a lot of like uh, beaver dam crossings like this one here. Um, I haven't been filming them because some of them are super sketchy. Like super sketchy. Uh, <laughs> I fell in, I shouldn't say I fell in, I fell knee deep in one a little while ago. It's pretty miserable so I'm not going to try and film it anymore. But it looks like, it's all starting to rain a little bit, but it looks like that like there's this swampy section that I'm going through right now. And then in maybe like two or three kilometers, it looks like it uh, it becomes like highlands almost. Look at this fly. Come on. Like it almost comes like highlands. So it should be drier, I'm hoping. Of course, we're also going to get the rain. So let's hope I don't get struck by lightning. Let's go. Seems to be the campsite. Ooh. I'm not going to stay here, but it's nice and big. We're making our way all the way to Victoria Bridge today. That's if I can make it. We've probably got still a solid 11 kilometers to go. And I've been hiking for three hours. You just can't make good time here. Okay, so that's where we stayed last night. We've passed Deep Gully and I believe the campsite. We're somewhere around here. We just did a big like loop-de-loo. So I'm thinking it's around here. I don't know. So trying to make our way to the end there. It doesn't seem that much further. A few more hours. Um, pulled a tick off my back when I stopped there for a second. So I'm gonna have to do a full tick check again tonight. Checked my feet, they looked good. Um, mostly just hoping the rain holds off, but uh, you know, this park is really nice. It's two hours from Toronto and it's free. Like it's literally free to visit and camp. It doesn't matter, you just show up and camp. So it's pretty cool. Can't believe I've never been here before after, you know, 40 years of camping. <sighs> okay, Let's plug away. trail turns into an ATV trail or off-road vehicle. I know there's a bunch of cabins in the park. This might be, be this might be how they access them uh, through these trails here. Um, we're also in like a lowlands area so it's very damp, very muggy and the bugs have decided to come visit and people always, always ask me like don't the bugs bother you and I just say what bugs? There's actually one like just sitting right on the, the lens. Now another one just landed. <laughs> anyway, it's part of life, man. If you go camping in, you know, May, June, eh, not so much in July, early July, you just got to deal with it. Suck it up. That's it. Oh, wow. We made it. We made it to Otter Junction. Oh, 
Okay, so this is Otter Junction here. That means our campsite is at the end of it, I believe. Where's the Montgomery Loop? Moores Falls, Devil's Lake, Loop Trail, Victoria Falls, Montgomery Creek Trail. I gotta figure something out. Let me look at the map. Hold on one second. Okay, I got confused, but everything makes sense. So the Montgomery Trail actually continues down there. And you can take that if you want to go right to uh, Victoria Bridge or Victoria Falls. I don't. I want to go on the southern terminus or the southern uh, trail because there's a campsite at the end and that's where I'm going to put in. I'm not going to put in at the bridge. When I say put in, it's where I'm going to put my pack raft in. So it looks like three and a half kilometers and they changed the trail markers to blue. So, you know, honestly, it's probably two hours in this, depending on how the trail is, but not looking good. I saw my second deer and it was a big guy. The first one I saw was just a little baby one. It had the white spots on it. But the second one just came charging out of the bush. It must have heard me. And then uh, made a beeline. Anyway, it was big. Thought maybe I could sneak up on it, but I guess he's probably long gone at this point. Sort of seemed to be running along the trail. So that maybe if he stopped and hid off the trail, we'd we'd catch him again. But it doesn't look like it. The view. I bet you go there in the morning and you'll find some some big moose eating in there. I actually wonder what the wildlife situation is like in this park. If you know, let me know in the comments. I saw two deer, uh, a couple of heron. That was about it. So if you know, like, is there a big bear population or whatever it is? Because I think there's hunt camps in here. It's crown land, so you should, I think you're allowed to hunt. Anyway, I think we're almost there. Just a little update for you guys. We have reached the junction. Time is 5.45. So we left at 9.30 this morning. So, you know, a couple stops. That's about eight hours of hiking. I'm sore and I'm tired. And the campsite along this trail is way in the back and doesn't have water access. And the water is way down there. So I'm going to work out something else. I'm going to work out something else. I don't know what yet, but I'm going to head over here and maybe find my own campsite. Not sure. Woo! That's not going to happen. Not in a million years. Not for me anyway. Okay, I've scoured the area. There really isn't much. I'm absolutely soaked. I'm just gonna camp right in this little thing. The road is right here, but fuck it. I'm gonna set the tarp up and just done. I'm done. It's, it's pouring again, it's out of control. This is what I've set up, right here. The best I could do, I'm gonna get stripped naked now and dry off. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the end of day summary. Uh, I hiked, I think I was planning to do 16K, 
but I did about 21 because uh, I went all over the place. And I'm actually camped at Victoria Bridge now, like I think you saw it in the middle of nowhere. Um, it took me like eight hours, eight or nine hours to get here. And man, it was a grind. Now, um, tomorrow is an all paddling day. I was actually considering paddling out tonight just because it's so bad and rainy. Uh, but I'll just do it tomorrow. It's no problem. I'm warm. I check for ticks. I'm good. I got my dinner. Everything's away. All I have to do is boil some water and eat and I'm done. But I got a toe problem. My toe was hurting me when we were hiking. I didn't do anything about it. Oh my God. I might have to go to the hospital for this. Okay. Oh. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Can you see that? A blister has formed underneath the toenail and it's forcing the toenail up. I do not know what to do in a situation like this. Like, look at that. Oh my God. I, I don't want to pop the blister because it's doing something right like when a blister forms it's trying to protect like it's it's trying to protect the toenail from whatever's happening beneath it it's like when you burn your finger and a blister forms it's because the skin is trying to create space between the heat and your nerves so like i don't know man have i been stubbing my toe all day long and and this has happened now anyway i'm just gonna leave it until tomorrow morning and see but uh, that's a real serious problem. That's not good. Like that's really not good at all. Okay, so I did drain it because I felt like the nail was gonna pop off in my sock or something. It was really loose. So I drained it and I, I taped it down a little bit and I put some tissue paper on the end so it can absorb any of the leakage. And um, we'll take a look at it in the morning and see what's going on. But. Uh, we are definitely not going to be walking. We're not going to be walking a whole lot on something like that. Um, yeah, that's going to be bad. That's going to be a problem. So we'll basically be on the water all day long. And then I got to figure out if I'm even going to be able to walk back to my car with something like this. Because uh, the bridge at the end of the uh, river, I'm like a kilometer and a half or two kilometers up from there. So stay tuned. Let's see what big toe, see what happens to big toe. Maybe we got to cut it off. I never recommend that you cook in the vestibule of your tent, but uh, I do it often, I'm going to be honest, especially when it's bad weather. So here we go, my little guy. And on today's menu is uh, Forever Young Mac and Cheese. I'm very excited about this. I'm starving. Yeah. Hungry. I'm going to eat something. I actually didn't have dinner last night. It was not a good time for me. So, eat this. It's probably, what time is it? It's seven o'clock? Yeah, well, there's not a whole lot to do, right? Just sit around and go to bed, really. That is the one. It's like carrots. Oh, you're getting foggy from the steam. Carrots, corn, peas, and um, pasta. Mm. I finally did it. I killed one. These ticks are so strong that I can't crush them with my fingers. I don't know why. So I, I put the GoPro lens on one side and my Garmin inReach and I smashed them. He still looks like he's in like half decent shape. But he's hurting, man. He's got a bad leg, that's for sure. I don't think he's gonna make it. And that's fine with me. Okay, here's the situation. I'm actually, it's only nine o'clock, but I'm dozing in and out of sleep. Probably because I'm so whooped. Um, I think I went over most of the stuff. I think I'm pretty much out of material anyway. So, why don't we go to bed? 
And do me a favor, can you guys pray to uh, Mother Nature that she stops making it rain? Thank you. Okay, to be continued. Okay. We're up. We're up. 7.15. I'm gonna roll around a little bit. But basically gonna get my button gear and head on out. We're gonna pack raft the Black River today. I already know what we're gonna put in. We're gonna put in just down there. Phase one. Oh, you know how wet my clothes are, right? They're in my bag. It's gonna be bad. And uh, we got to check the toe. I'm very nervous about the toe. Look at the bugs. Ooh. Okay, here's the big reveal. Oh man, it feels... Feels really good. There's some blood there for sure. I'm going to leave that on there for the day because it feels way better. Okay, that's the plan. And then when I get home, I got to like Google what to do. I don't know if this is like I have to go to the hospital or something to get my toenail removed, but as long as I can walk, I'm going to be able to finish the trip. If I was like in like day one of a five day trip, I don't know what I would do. Like I would need a helicopter out of here or something. So. Oh my. Look at the sun! Is it possible? <sighs> Could it be? Could it be? Could it be that we get sun? Oh, you saw me. You saw it. Okay. You know, we don't like to talk about this stuff, but people do go to the bathroom in the woods. I actually made a video of it a while ago. Uh, it's up here, so it's private time. Um, talk with you later. Feel it! How long do you think I got before it rains again? I'm gonna go with 8.30? I say by 11. I say by 11. I know you guys are thinking, oh Steve, you're so negative. I'm not. I'm smart. There's a difference. For those wondering, these are the Gossamer Gear LT5s. Lightest trekking pole in the market. Lightest adjustable trekking pole in the market. Well, it doesn't actually look that bad, to be honest. Like... I'll come in there. Looks like it pretty much pumps you out as long as you don't get caught down there. 
Anyway, we're skipping this section. It looks like in high water, it's all the way up there. So you can imagine what the rest of the place looks like. It must be wild. But today, you know, we don't have any gear. We're by ourselves. We've got a pack raft and a life jacket. That's it. We didn't bring any of the whitewater stuff because we're not doing that today. So let's make our way down to the beach where the sun tanners are, the relaxers. Inflate this bad boy up and see if we can't get somewhere good in a decent amount of time before rain starts. Want one more look? We have a very small walk just up here to the end. I don't know, maybe 15 minutes. Then we're going in. Okay, so <clears throat> a little bit overgrown here. You can see no trespassing there. It's just down there. I remember I saw it before. So I got to figure out a way to get around this. Obviously, the person who controls that bridge does not want trespassers. It's a little turtle. It's a little guy. Uh, I don't know. He looks... Ooh. I don't know my turtles well, but you know, when I see that pointy tail, I tend to think a little bit of a snapper. It looks like one. But anyway, it's kind of far from water. Hope you're okay, buddy. Time is 9.18, we got the pack raft ready. She's good to go for the maiden voyage. Not gonna film me getting in because you look at this uh, drop off here. So this is actually eroding away and a big chunk just fell off. So, see this here? Yeah, that, that's actually falling off little by little. Maybe I'll launch over here. Um, anyway, I just wanna go for a dunk. So I'll get back to you guys when we're uh, on the water. This is kayak life. The GoPro is very close to my face, but it's secure and that's what we need. So we're on the Black River. Um, I don't know anything about it. I've got a map of it, but you have to understand like having a map of a river and like actually being on the river is very two different, very different things. So my understanding is the water level is very low. You can actually see, I'll show you how high the water has got. It looks like we're, honestly, it looks like it's about eight to 10 feet higher at some points. Um, so I guess this could be just a raging whitewater run in the springtime, which was my plan, but maybe it's almost better that I didn't do it because, you know, it might've been above my skill level. Like when I look at that stuff up there, um, I mean, I could run it. There's no problem. I could certainly run it. Uh, but by yourself, eh, no helmet. Hmm. I don't know, man. Like that's the type of stuff you read about in the newspaper. So it's best just to leave that there. Um, what we'll do is we'll, we've got a, so we've got a 13 or 14 kilometer paddle and the river is not flowing fast, but it's moving enough that I feel we could make some good time. A little bit of a head breeze. Anyway, I'll show you guys any wonderful sights that uh, come to be. Join me, join me on the Black River.
we've had to put the bug net on and uh, just give you guys an update. There is a rapid, got a paddle with one hand here, uh, right around this corner called Glory Hole. It's called Glory Hole, uh, which is really weird hole, really, or sorry, really weird name, but uh, maybe they knew I was coming. I don't know what it's going to look like. Um, probably going to portage it if it is anything significant, but I thought I'd give you a heads up before we get there in case there's some, uh, some drama, you know. More drama for your mama. Okay, so I can definitely hear it, uh, which makes me think that it's definitely unrunnable. Looks like there's a portage just to the right-hand side there. I might, might just go a little bit left and see if I can boat scout it. Um, but, you know, running it blind is certainly not an option, so let's just see what, let's just see what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it, but that's Glory Hole. Clearly a steep drop off. Um, you can't see anything. I'm not going to get much closer. But it looks like it's a significant drop if you look below it. I don't know if you can see that. You know, it's probably a seven, eight, nine foot drop. So let's portage it. So just along the portage here, someone's got a campsite set up. The pack wrap, couple chairs. So this is Glory Hole. Which to me actually looks amazing, even in low water. Look at that. Definitely not something you want to do blind, but Give us a little bit of a kickstart for the rest of the river, that's for sure. Look at this fly. After Glory Hole on the map, looks like it's a pretty oh wait, looking at the wrong area. Yeah, pretty flat paddle up until we get to Ragged Rapids, which is about two kilometers away or so. So we just uh take our time and relax, I guess. This little thing right here. Do you guys see it? It's like a little snake or a turtle or something. It is. It's a piece of it's a piece of wood. It's a piece of wood. <laughs> Floating in the vertical direction like a buoy. That's amazing. I was so excited. I thought like, oh, I'm actually gonna get something on video. Anyway, let's just let's just keep going. So I can hear the rapids way up there, but the portage starts right here. And realistically, I'm not running them anyway, so I'm just gonna I'm not even gonna look at them. I'm just gonna head right out into the portage. We, maybe we'll get a better look at them when we're on the portage. But just listening to it, I can tell it's not something that um, we're going to want to do. Here's the first view. Looks a little wild, to be honest. Can't really see what's going on. A lot of frothy, foamy. But it doesn't look like it's too long. Looks like it's almost over right away. We probably could have just gone up and scouted around. Anyway, I'm just biting off more than I can chew at this point. Let's just get the hell out of here. Okay, so I didn't realize how far long of a portage was it is, but it's about an hour. See the signs portage route on each year. These are actually roads to the hunting cabin that's right at the portage. And uh, I just wanted to make a point. So a lot of times when you come to these like crown land or, uh, or non-operating um, provincial parks, what they do is they basically partner with some of the residents or some of the landowners. 
they provide like access over roads and portages and stuff like that so just be aware that uh it's it's private property that's being um granted you access in order to portage and just you know treat it accordingly um just because i was just at that last campsite um and it's beaten up pretty bad you know it's like a whole bunch of stuff there and i don't know if that's also privately owned or if that's just crown land but i mean you can imagine that if someone's letting you camp on their land they're not going to appreciate you leaving it in that condition so be respectful leave no trace man that's really it okay so we're just coming up finishing the portage mosquito activity has picked up significantly here you can see on my hand oh my god so we want to get back on the water as soon as possible looks like they've installed some stairs here to get down looks like it's a straight up like wicked campsite here oh my god Spikes. here i'll show you that's ragged rapids just the end of it i actually didn't get a chance to look at the beginning of it just Honestly, it was too hard to get to. I wasn't going to run it and the bugs were eating me alive, man. So I'm going to get back on the water right now. Kind of nice, eh? The river has a very small current to it. Oh, I'm actually gonna hit the wall right now, but that's okay. And even if you don't paddle, you move at probably, you know, half a kilometer an hour or something. But it's nice just to rest the uh, the arms and listen. Ooh, now I hear some wind. Hold on, there's something nice up here. So as we come across. Right here, put this in it. Not bad. I've mentioned it before, but the pack raft floats very high, but the pack raft is also inflatable. So you have to be careful in these areas. Because you could be in for you know, a doozy.
Well, my friends, guess what has started? The rain. I believe at this exact moment that to my right is where my car is. Problem is, is it doesn't seem like there's many trails there. And the plan was always to go to the bridge. I just didn't park at the bridge. So we're going to keep paddling. I think it's about three more kilometers. The time is 12.30, so we've been on the river for nine, 10, 11, uh, three hours. My arms are starting to get a little tired, that is for sure. But it uh, should be like another hour or so. Then we exit the river, and then we got about an hour hike to the car. So we'll see how it goes. That's it. The bridge of, bridge of Doom. Okay, there's a parking lot up there. I just gotta figure out how to get up there. Oh, there's a spot right there. I'm gonna get it right there. Okay, so it's one o'clock in the afternoon. We left at 9.30, so we're in for, uh, three and a half hours of pack rafting. Yeah, I had to double check. It's been a long day. Um, pack rafting is not like canoeing. You know, canoeing, the canoe tracks are very well. That was a haul. I did like, uh, I think I did 15 kilometers or so. I got to check the, the map. But uh, to do that in three and a half hours on a pack raft is, is intense. Like my whole, oh my God. I'm not gonna be able to move this tomorrow. Okay, now then. An update. I'm gonna pack this stuff up. I might actually hide the pack raft like in there or something. I gotta hike about two kilometers to get to my car. Uh, I am gonna try and hitchhike if someone will pick me up, but I highly doubt anybody will. So let's go. So I'm actually just gonna leave my pack raft and stuff right there. Be back in like half an hour. I don't think enough people drive by here that would even see it. Or at least I hope they would leave it. Some guy with a chainsaw though, he's probably gonna make a mask out of my skin and uh, live through my soul. You know, Texas, Texas style. Oh my God, he heard me. So in case you're wondering who was nice enough to give me a lift, Ken builds a professional ATV and uh, snowmobile trails. There's his license plate. It's a pretty hardcore ATV uh, ramp. Anyway, all very, very nice people and I thank them so much if you watch this for giving me a ride. Just changing the back of the car and then we're gonna head home. Oh my. Oh my! We made it! Okay, first thing to do, we gotta pick up the kayak before it gets stolen. Where's my phone? Time check. Who knows, I'll let you know when I pick up the kayak.
Do not judge me. Perfect. Thank you. Take care. Currently driving home on the 400. I think what we're going to do is called a uh, post-trip discussion. Except the discussion is going to take place with only me inside my car. Because it's by myself. <clears throat> okay. First thing to discuss is difficulty. Uh, the trail is not super difficult as in like elevation up and down or even distance if you look at my kilometers each day they're probably around 15 to 20. Um, what can be difficult is the navigation and when I say it can be difficult in navigation that's using a map. I used a map for the entire time except I pulled out my GPS because I have a GPS now and I did bring it um, except for when I got off of Wolf Lake to do the portage westbound uh, to Loon Lake. I could not find the trail after that. And as a matter of fact, when I turned my GPS on, I was like, just so gone in the wrong direction. Thank God I turned it on because I would have never got out of there. So uh, navigation wise, yeah, I think that it's uh, pretty important that you bring something to help you out with. Now that said, the trail is amazingly blazed. Even the overgrown parts, like even all that wilderness section right in between there. I mean, no one's hiked that, obviously, you know, I don't know how long, for years or months or whatever it is. But literally, there's a blaze like every meter and it's pretty easy to follow the trail. So, that's not bad. Um, my knees are sore. You've seen my toe. I've got that blister on my toe. I'm not sure what that is. I gotta, uh, like, I gotta take a look at that. My shoulders now, oh, after today paddling, those are sore. So just make sure you're in half decent shape before you do something like uh, the Wildlands Traverse. Okay. Second thing we want to talk about is the gear. <clears throat> what worked and what didn't. If you watch the very first episode of this um, mini-series, let's call it, <laughs> you'll see that I threw in my big 10 by 12 tarp at the very last minute. I actually stuck it right on top of my pack. Thank God I brought that. You guys saw the rain that I had to deal with, and that can be very disheartening. Like, just torrential, soaking wet. Oh, it just gets you down, so it's tough to keep uh, positive. That tarp, literally both nights, saved my life. Um, being in the Z-Packs, that little tiny uh, um, Solplex, it would be really confined for the amount of time I was in there. So, thank God I did bring that tarp. Uh, second thing, I got new shoes. I don't know if I told you that or not, those blue ones, I just bought them. I've been on a bunch of hikes with them too, but never, I guess, as long as we did on this one. And obviously I gotta take a look at it because my toe is mangled. There's a problem there. There's a serious problem. It is, like, I'm not joking, I might have to go to the hospital or something. Who has a blister under their toe? I have no idea, I've never had that before. But it's obviously, looks like it's from my toe hitting the end of the shoe. But the shoe, it seems to have like plenty of room, so I gotta look into that. I gotta figure that stuff out. My rain gear, you know that I have the Luke's ultralight stuff. I tore the crotch of the pants significantly, like a 12 inch gash right in my butt. Um, I'm gonna have to get new ones. I'm not gonna repair those. That's actually the second or third time I've been in like, you know, sustained torrential rain. And that, um, rain jacket and rain pants they're not situated well for that they're more like you know they can repel rain or whatever but not not for what uh what we're seeing there so i'm gonna take a look at something maybe get a little something more robust i don't know what's out there actually i gotta take a look as a matter of fact if you know something let me know just make sure it's light i don't carry heavy stuff i carry super light stuff uh something else that i wanted to cover was that pack the hyperlight mountain gear pack so i actually have had that for a couple years it carries really well it really does carry so well. Um, but I noticed uh, a long time ago, one time I brought on a pack rafting trip, and again, you know, you can see it on this trip, it's not waterproof. And I don't know if they're supposed to be waterproof or if they're not supposed to be waterproof, but if you're gonna make a pack raft pack, it should be waterproof. And I have a waterproof pack raft pack, it's the, called the ULA Epic, um, Ultralight Adventure. Uh, company so if you if you want to check out something really cool check that out it's basically a dry bag with a harness uh, I brought it on my Baffin Island trip 
Uh, I bring it on most of my pack rafting trips. I'm not sure why I even decided to bring the HMG one, but I did. And on top of that, the HMG one has very small hip belt pockets. I know they've upgraded it since then, but I don't think I'm going to spend three or four hundred dollars on a new pack just to get bigger hip belt pockets. I think that that one might just be like, you know, winter time or or big big load, big load hauler. No more pack rafting with that uh, backpack. And then probably my final kind of gear issue that I had was I brought the pack raft, but I didn't bring the whitewater skirt because um, I knew I wasn't going to be doing any whitewater. But, you know, it still gets a lot of water inside there. Uh, there's even water dripping off the handles. I haven't really paddled it for, you know, I paddled 15 kilometers today, which is the, probably the farthest I've ever paddled a, a pack raft on flat water in my life. Um, so water continuously drips in it plus it was raining it ended up filling substantially actually with uh, with water so moving forward even if I'm gonna be doing flat water stuff I'm probably gonna bring the skirt just to keep that type of stuff out I think that just about covers it I hope you enjoyed the series and let me know in the comments below if you like this I used to do one video um, for my entire trip even if it was like a 10 day trip if you go back and look at my Baffin Island video like I did eight days solo in the Arctic and just made it one one hour video this one I broke up into, I think, four. So let me know if you'd prefer the mini-series style or the full version style. And at the end of this uh, episode, I'm gonna release all of them combined in one. Uh, I see that's what other people are doing. It seems to be kind of popular. So um, let me know what you think. So I think that book covers it. I'm gonna make my way home. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. If you're watching this for the first time, hit the little subscribe button. There's a notification button. You can press all those buttons. You can also follow me on my social media channels. They have buttons as well. Press all the buttons you can. I'm Steve Evans and I'll see you on the trail.